It only takes one. One smile to brighten someone's day, one kind word to take the pain away. One look into someone's eyes to show them that you care, one hug or embrace to let them know that you will always be there. One small thing affects everything, and if you're relentless enough, your life will be affecting the king. He says, what you have done unto the least of these, you have done unto me. So be on the lookout, because you never know whose life you're touching. Billy Graham is one of the world's best known Christian evangelists. The world has watched as his ministries have led millions all over the globe to the Lord. Now that he's nearing the end of his life, people are talking about who's going to replace him. Who's going to become the next Billy Graham? My guess says he probably isn't a Christian yet. For all we know, he could be lost somewhere on the streets. We always pray for the lost to get found, but then we seem to forget about the part where we're called to go and find them. You see, Billy Graham didn't become who he was today by chance, but because someone took that time to invest in his life, to make him a disciple, which is exactly what we're called to do. Matthew 28, 19, and 30 says to go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The part of this verse, though, that we sometimes just came to skip over is the phrase, all nations. That means this nation, that means here, that means you, and that means now. When I was 12, God called me to the mission field of Haiti. Last summer, I had the opportunity to finally go and visit that country. And while I was walking the streets with the people and praying with them in their churches and spending time with the children in the orphanages, God did some amazing things in my life. I felt so effective. I felt like I knew where, that I was finally doing the things that God had called me to do. But when I came back home, I didn't really feel that way. I felt stuck. All I wanted to do was just fast forward through high school so I could get back to Haiti, I could get back to that mission field, I could get back to changing hundreds of lives because I didn't want to sit here and waste time. But the biggest lie that the devil kept telling me was tomorrow. But today is yesterday's tomorrow. Today is the day that the Lord has made and I'm gonna rejoice and be glad in it. I'm not gonna take it for granted, but take advantage of every open door and every opportunity that God has for me here, that he has for me now. Martin Luther once said that the greatest art next to faith is this, that one becomes content with the things that God has called him to do. Too often, we, we miss that big picture. We get caught up in the names, in the numbers, in the titles, in the locations. You see, God has all called us all to make disciples. And according to Ephesians 5.1, we are all called to imitate Christ. When Christ was here on this earth, where was he? He was making disciples. He was simply loving people. So last summer I thought about that, and I realized that if I could learn to do that, if I could learn to love just one person every day from now until the day that I graduated high school, I would have loved, I would have changed 703 lives. And that's all right here, right now, learning to be content with the things that God has called me to do. Luke 10, 27 it says to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, to love your neighbor as yourself. When asked who is my neighbor, Jesus goes on to tell the parable of the Good Samaritan, a story where one man was beaten, robbed, left on the side of the road. Three men passed him by that day with only one stopping to help. In verse 36, Jesus continues by asking, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus then said, go and do likewise. Every day, all around us, we walk past people who have been beaten, who have been robbed. Maybe not always in that physical way, but their cuts and their scars, they are more than skin deep. We need to learn to imitate the Good Samaritan who is imitating God's love by having mercy on that man. Because by just a glance, you don't know someone's story, someone's past, what their future holds. You may not be the next big evangelist, but maybe you're the one to make him a disciple to show him God's love. Because in the end, it's not about us or our name or our titles or how many people we got saved, but about bringing glory to our creator, the name above all names. And that's our purpose in this life, to bring him the glory. Whether it's as a world famous evangelist, overseas on the mission field, or right here, right now, be content with the things that God has called you to do. So instead of just passing by and love people as if you're loving Christ, because this nation is hurting and needs you now, so be on the lookout, ready to reach out. Never stop, don't give up, make sure that God feels your love and be relentless for the one because you never know who they'll become.